Hello, I'm Vijay. I'm Darvi. I'm Karan. And I'm Varun. This is the presentation on states of matter in space and gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn. Before we proceed to the states of matter in space, let's recall what we know about the states of matter on Earth. They're solids, liquids, and gases. But what about plasma, the fourth state of matter which makes up most of space? It is like gas since it fills any container it is in, but the ions and electrons interact in a unique way, unlike the atoms or molecules in solids, liquids, or gases. However, things get a bit more complicated in space. For example, if you heat water in a strong but transparent container above, above a certain temperature and pressure, the liquid and gas states become one. The water is now super critical fluid. In space, there are quite a few exotic states of matter like this. This is important in understanding space, especially in gas giants, since gas giants are unique and their structure differs from planets like Earth. For example, liquid hydrogen is present on the mantle of Saturn and Jupiter, which has properties of liquid as well as gas. Unlike rocky planets, gas giants do not have a well-defined surface. There is no clear boundary between where the atmosphere ends and where the surface starts. It is the atoms and molecules that make up our physical world. The physical characteristics of these atoms and molecules decide their state. So to understand space, knowing their states of matter is super important. The most abundant form of matter in space is ionized gas or plasma. This is because stars are the largest bodies in the solar system, and they are mostly made of plasma. They are almost always larger than all the objects that orbit it combined. Gas giants aren't all gas. They also have a solid core and a liquid mantle. Convection usually occurs in any planet's mantle or atmosphere, including gas giants. The mantle convection can cause earthquakes, volcanoes, and other such phenomena if there are tectonic plates on the crust. In an atmosphere, it causes things like weather and whirlwinds. A phenomenon that happens on two of the gas giants, Jupiter and Saturn, is where elements present on Earth change states of matter. For example, hydrogen is a gas on Earth, but on Jupiter and Saturn, it changes form to become metallic or solid. Under low pressure, molecules of hydrogen and helium have lots of room to bounce around like gases. However, this weight of these gases are heavy and it presses down towards the planet's core, creating high pressure. The molecules run out of room to bounce around, so instead they slow down and crowd together. This creates a liquid. As the pressure increases, the hydrogen atoms start to lose their electrons, which makes the electrons unbound so they can move easily between the nuclei. This is a property of metal, and hence hydrogen in these planets behaves like a metal. Another interesting phenomenon is Saturn's ring, because of how close the particles are, like in a solid molecule. These particles rub across each other, which exerts mutual gravitational influence. Because of these interactions, we see phenomena such as waves that move across the rings, just the way water waves move over the surface of the ocean. The third phenomenon is a strong magnetic field in the gas giants. There are electrons and protons of hydrogen, and they form Jupiter's radiation belts. The particles of matter get accelerated to high energies due to the strong magnetic field. There is high radiation in gas giants, but Jupiter has the most radiation. In choosing a career path to explore more about space, there are many ways to get involved. One such interesting career is an aerospace robotics engineer. Aerospace robotics engineers are engineers who create robots or build robotic tools for space exploration that can perform functions which stand extreme temperature and pressure gradients of space. An example of this is when NASA released the new WindBot. The WindBot is designed to stay in a gas giant atmosphere, such as Jupiter and Saturn. This is cleverly designed by an engineer, yet as of right now, no WindBots have been tested. This is simply an idea waiting to be tested. High school students interested and pursuing a career in aerospace robotics engineering should take courses in chemistry, physics, advanced math, computer programming, computer languages. Then in college, while working towards a bachelor's degree, people typically choose a major in one or more types of engineering departments, mechanical, electrical, aeronautical, methotronics, etc. The bachelor's degree gets you the fundamental, but is not sufficient for getting opportunities in elite organizations like NASA. Doing graduate level work is very important, but to get out of graduate school, it is recommended that you get some work experience after getting your bachelor's degree. There are several schools who engineering department work closely with space research organizations and getting those programs will help you get a jump start. But the most important qualification to have is to have a passion and to follow that passion. I will end this presentation by saying Mr. Les Brown's quote, shoot for the moon, even if you miss you land among the stars.